talked about flip-flops being a mechanism to have digital memory. You're probably also familiar that computers run on a clock. There is a clock that runs at some frequency, and every time that clock pulse goes high, the computer does some operation. So what we'd like to talk about today are clocked flip-flops. Those are flip-flops that do their operation when the clock pulse is high. So a clock, in the simplest sense, is just a voltage chain. It's a function of T, which is oscillates between 1 and 0. So we have a clock pulse that looks something like that. And we use that to basically drive something. So there's some frequency associated with that and some period. And we won't worry so much about how we make that clock pulse. You can make it with a function generator. You could make it with an LC circuit. You could make it with an RC circuit and a, and a chip called a 555. You could make it with a quartz oscillator, which is common in watches. Lots of ways to make the clock, but it's a clock pulse that comes in, which is high and low. And clock flip-flop, we're going to take a, let's take our NAND-based flip-flop. Set, reset, Q, Q bar. And the idea is that we're going to have an input stage here. We're going to feed in. It is a couple of NAND gates. We're going to have some S prime and some R prime that comes in. And we're going to have a <laughs> clock signal that's fed into those two inputs there. Now, let's just remember what the truth table is for this flip flop S, R, Q. Write it this way. If S and R are high, we're in the hold state. This is the set. And this is the reset. And now let's look at the input stage of this. If clock is low or zero, so the clock is zero, and there's a zero input in here, it doesn't matter what this is, the output of the AND gate is going to be zero, complement's going to be one, so we're going to get a one here. So if the clock is low, both S and R equal one. That means if the clock is low, the flip-flop is in the hold state. It's not going to do anything. It's just going to hold the memory. If the clock is 1, then it reads its input. So if this is 1, if the set is also 1, so we have a 1 and a 1, gives us a 1 here, we get a 0 output. That takes this low. That sets it. So S prime, we get s equals 0, and we get a set if s prime equals 1 and r prime equals 0. s prime equals 0 and r prime equals 1, we get s equals 1, r equals 0, we get a reset. So this clock stage effectively turns this into a NOR-based flip-flop that only reads its input when the clock is high doesn't do anything when the clock is low. So this digital memory looks at its input when the clock is high, and it sits there and does nothing when it's low. So the clock being high activates the flip-flop. It looks at its input and decides if it needs to change its state or just sit where it is. So that's the so-called clocked flip-flop. With some more layers on this, we can actually do something called an edge-triggered flip-flop, where we're not just sensitive to the clock being high or low, but we're sensitive to the clock going from low to high or from high to low. So we can make it a rising edge that we're sensitive to or a falling edge that we're sensitive to. And then the flip-flop only looks at its input when the clock is staying, changing states going in one particular direction. That's also a much more common thing. So an edge triggered is we look at the edge of a clock, the rising pulse of a clock to do something. That's most of what logic is. But you can see the clock flip-flop here. There are other flip-flops that are also useful, and these are all clocked flip-flops. So the first one is something called a JK flip-flop. And won't so much worry about it's we can draw the circuit here. So this monster here is the so-called JK flip-flop. 
You can sort of see the RS flip-flop, but you're taking some feedback into the first stage. We have two inputs, J and K. We have a clock. Feedback goes through there. And this monstrosity has a truth table. There is a the clock has to be high for it to do anything. So it only works on the high clock pulse or if it's edge triggered on the edge. And then we have a J and a K. Q and Q bar. So we get zero, zero. And this is the hold state. We just get Q and Q bar back. We go to one, zero. We're going to get a one, zero. We set zero, one, zero, one. We reset. And there's one more mode that's interesting. If both J and K are high, then we flip Q and Q bar. So we so-called toggle the output. So if the original Q is zero, Q bar is going to be one. If we have both inputs one, it's going to turn a zero into a one here and a one into a zero. It's going to flip the state of the thing to either zero or one. And we're going to use that particular circuit basically to develop something that's a counting circuit. So the symbol for a JK flip-flop looks something like this. JK inputs the clock inputs, Q and Q bar. There are a couple of other things. We have to hold some things high to activate it. But that's basically what we're going to do. And the cute thing we can do with these is we can build a counting circuit. So we can chain a couple of these together here. So there's the clock, J, K, Q. And the idea is that we take J and K, and we strap them to five bolts, so they're both locked to one. And then we just have the clock pulse come in. So that's the toggle mode. And then we're going to take the Q output, and we're going to make it the clock input to the next one. And those two are going to be strapped to five volts. And we'll call this here, call it Q0. Call that the first level output. And we'll do another one here just for fun. And then we'll stop and take a look at what it does. JK. We'll strap those to 5 volts. We'll take the Q output, put it into our clock input. Q. Here's Q1. This will be Q2, and we could keep going. So let's start out with the input here. So we're going to have a clock pulse coming in. We'll draw this clock pulse here. And then we will have Q0, the first bit. And this flip-flop reads its state on a rising edge of the clock pulse. So on the rising edge of the clock pulse, this is going to flip. And then it's going to, nothing's going to happen until the next rising edge of the clock pulse. So it's going to go on rising edges. So over here. We're going to pulse, and now it's going to flip states. Next rising edge, flip back. Next rising edge, flip back, flip back. This is kind of interesting. This has a period that's twice that, or it has half the frequency. We've cut the frequency in half. So this pulse, this has a clock pulse that has half as many clock pulses as that. That's Q0. Q1 coming in. It's going to be sensitive to this, so on a rising edge here, it's going to go up. Now it waits for the rising edge there. It's going to go over to here and then flip states, and it's not going to flip states again until we're here. So this has cut the frequency in half again. So this is frequency, half the frequency, quarter the frequency, Q2 is going to be an eighth of the frequency, and so forth. So this chain of things here basically divides the frequency by two for each part of the chain. And we can set this up to be a binary counter if we want by turning on bits. But the main thing here is it's a frequency divider. So that's one of the main uses of this JK flip-flop, is to use that toggle mode as a frequency divider.
There's another type of flip-flop that we can do, which is called a D flip-flop, where the D stands for data. And the data flip-flop, a couple of NAND gates, data comes in, clock pulse, and we take the data, and we take the complement of it and put it down here. We take these two guys into an SR flip-flop, and we get the Q out. And that has a symbol that is fairly simple, D, the clock input, and the Q output. And the truth table of that is basically, if the clock is high, the data input is transferred to output. So, so the truth table here, if the D is zero, the Q will go to zero. If the D is one, the Q will go to one. It just reads the, whatever is on the data input when the clock is high and puts it on the output. And so data thing, data, data flip-flop. That's used in a chain as well. Put several of these together here. Clocks, D, D, D. So we bring in the D signal. The Q signal goes into the next one, Q. And then we have a clock that comes in, goes into here. Same clock in each one. So Q0, Q1, Q2. And what this does is every time the clock pulses, each one of these flip-flops reads their input and transfers it in. So let's assume they all start with 0. So they all start with Q0, Q1, Q2, all being 0. And we'll put a 1 in on the data. So the first clock pulse, that gets transferred into here. The other two read their input, they're 0. Then we'll flip the data back to 0. So for one clock pulse, we'll have a high data. The next clock pulse, this one is going to read the 1. This will read the 0, and this reads it 0. So the 1 moves from here to here. The next clock pulse, that 1 moves from here to here. And on the next clock pulse, that one is dumped. That one moves through all these flip-flops on each clock pulse. This is known as a shift register. It basically lets us hold this bit in memory for as many clock pulses as we have D flip-flops. So if we need time in the computer to think about something, then we line up a bunch of these D flip-flops into a shift register, and the memory value just gets shoved through. And after some length of time, we have the output, and we can decide what to do with it. So that's what a D flip-flop is for. And that's also very useful. And these are, both of these are used in computers for various things. But the D flip-flop is a shift register. The JK flip-flop, often a counting circuit or a frequency division circuit.